Uh, women's issues. Last week we had a silent protest at the IEC Results Centre in Schwani, of course, and uh, that issue was handled in a controversial way. But big picture, let's ask how women can use their fame and name, that's a way of putting it, to influence the social discourse. And joining me for this is Marketa Liebenberg, General Manager for Loria Lux in South Africa. And also uh, with us is Taryn Lauch, who is a multifaceted, multi-talented performer and actor. Marketa, I'll ask you to kick off. If you've got a name that takes you into the public eye, so you have some fame, you have some name. Now, the degree, of course, varies. Do you consciously now say, I'm going to use this? I'm going to actually use this to achieve things that I want to achieve, to influence the, the social discourse, as we said? So, um, thank you, David, for having me here. Um, definitely, I think it's, it's such an amazing opportunity as a woman um, to be able to inspire other women. And I think that in the industry that I work in, which is beauty, mm. um, it's, it's definitely the sort of thing that we do. We give women confidence. Um, they have something to look up to. I mean, our brands are so varied, and I always say I can, I can almost use a different brand each day to, give me an, to suit my alter ego. So today, if I want to be the perfect mom, you mm. know, I use a brand like Lancome, which inspires you know, a particular look, uh, Parisian chic, which is quite understated. But tomorrow, if I want to go out and be the party girl, mm. um, which uh, is nice as well, um, then I can obviously use a brand like Yves Saint Laurent, which is synonymous for something a little bit more couture and high level. So, I, you know, and, and I think women look at this and they mm. aspire to it. And, and I think I'm fortunate to be able to do that for people. I hope I've got the brand right because they're worth it. It's part of the group, <laughs> absolutely. L'Oreal, because They're you're worth absolutely it. Absolutely, we are, we are, we all are. I buy a little bit here and there. <laughs> <laughs> Taryn? Well, I definitely think, uh, you know, being a personality or being on the media front, you know, you can use that platform in both a positive and a negative way. So hopefully not a negative way, but as an influencer, you know, the things that you post, the things that you share, you are an example to women mm. by default. Mm. You know, so you need to use that platform really wisely to inspire and encourage other women in the industry to, you know, follow in your footsteps. Mm. Let's look at the business uh, area and issues for women in business. You're in business. So, yes. I am. And again, I think that, and I've, I've often had this discussion with friends who are maybe in different industries, we have a lot of women in the industry. So, you know, this glass ceiling concept and whatnot, I've never really felt it. Um, I think maybe being part of a multinational, they encourage women, they've encouraged, you know, women to be women, to be mothers. Um, so that's why L'Oreal is one of the Well, isn't it employers. easier also? It's not earth-moving equipment. Uh, <laughs> it isn't, it isn't. <laughs> perfume and, and uh, nice But things. it's manufacturing nonetheless. Mm. Yeah. Actually, it's not that different. It's yeah. just what we're selling. Yes, the, the channels may be a little bit different as well. But most certainly, I haven't um, ever been exposed to to this concept of the glass ceiling. And I've always felt that we've been encouraged to rise to the top Quite a few general managers across the world are females, yeah. um, and and it's nice to see. And in South Africa, I think we've done pretty well compared to some uh, some countries uh, in that. Taryn, you're in more in the entertainment side. You're an actress, yes. you're an MC, and that kind of thing. When I'm with Nozzy and we go into the makeup room before the uh, show, I spend 20 seconds, <laughs> okay, to put a bit of powder on me. She spends half an hour. I mean, there's a pressure on you more than there is on men to, to kind of deliver looks, deliver makeup, deliver l dress and so on, isn't there? Definitely. Marquette and I were actually chatting about it earlier, saying that, you know, women, especially in the industry of arts, entertainment, beauty, mm. there is a pressure to look a certain way. But we need to look at it at a deeper level, saying that, you know, there can be a woman in a beautiful dress, but if there is no woman, there is no dress. Mm, mm. You know, so rather be the woman that wears the dress. Don't let that define you, um, rather than letting the dress wear you. Okay, it sounds like you're saying there actually there isn't. I've, if there's a glass ceiling, I didn't notice it. So, For me, so we got through it, and yeah. it sounds like you've been very successful in the world that you work in. And I think it's a world where men and women work well together. You know, the entertainment world. Absolutely. So now you've got the confidence. You're there. What are the issues that face you? What, what are the things that you're saying now, now, now I've got to deal with this? I think one of the biggest issues sort of across the board is women standing in other women's ways. Oh. Uh, there's a campaign at the moment called End Girl Hate, and it's just about women, you know, feeling insecure within themselves and then not wanting other women to succeed. So, is, I mean, there's a bit of a cliche about this, that uh, men kind of just get on and have a beer together, yes. but women are... 
rivals for men in a different way than men are for women, but also with each other, constantly Absolutely. competing. Is that right? So, again, maybe it's because I work for a multinational organization and there's a very fast pace of um, job opportunities. They're global, they're local, people move constantly. That I don't really and have never felt that I, I, don't, I have to guard my job or that somebody has to guard their job because there's always these extra opportunities um, that, that present themselves. Uh, yeah. And we're known to be very dynamic like that as an organization. Um, and for me, it's just suited me perfectly. Um, so every two years people move, every two, three years you're in a new job, which keeps yeah. it exciting for us as well. Is it possible that women now have the edge over men in the sense that there has been a, a push to, ex and women have taken it. They've accepted the challenge and taken it. Young black women have moved into so many areas that were unthinkable for all women uh, not so long ago. So it's almost like you're on a roll, aren't you? Absolutely. Well, the emancipation of women has just sort of escalated and mm. there's nothing that a woman can't do. You know, and I think we've just got this incredible platform now to, mm. you know, there's a quote that says, I don't want to be equal to a man because that's not really succeeding. Well, I want to be ambitious. a woman. Yes. You want to be equal. That's not very ambitious. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, Marketa, if you could wave a wand, if you had uh, more power than you have or could perhaps exercise the power you have more, what would you want to achieve? So, I think I would want to achieve a flexible way of working. Um, within the organization um, and it is happening globally um, and it is something that I want us to move ahead on as well because I feel that if you're accountable, responsible um, and the way that the world has gone with technology, um, you can most certainly um, have a little bit more of a flexible type of working arrangement. Is this in line with the family work balance? Exactly, yeah. because I do think that the fact that we have a lot of women, I myself have a child, um, and, and you want to be good in both spheres. Yeah. Um, I don't want to do badly in either, no. I want to be able to be you successful don't have to in choose. both. Yeah. Exactly, so I think for me, um, it is the way that the world is moving, and we most certainly will move that way in the future. I wouldn't say the near well, future. Well, uh, men also certainly. would like more flexibility. I mean, I think sure. it's not just women. But it seems to me this is the one thing that we haven't got right yet, that women are still expected to do both, and most men are actually not expecting or expected to do both. Is that right, Kato? Absolutely. And, you know, a woman also only has two hands, just like a man. Oh, oh. <laughs> I think for me, if I could wave that magic wand, um, I definitely agree with what Marquette is saying, but also just to merge in my industry specifically, the arts and business, because people are either in arts or they're in business, but mm. art is a business. And if women and men, you know, could treat it more that way, I think we could have a lot more really successful South African artists. Well, and look at the role models just moving into politics. Angela Merkel, mm -hmm. Theresa May, Hillary Clinton. I mean, you, you're taking over the world, aren't you? <laughs> One step at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully manicured. <laughs> Nails. <Thanks. and laughs> that's all we have time for, unfortunately. And that's it for Business This Week. Thanks to Marketa Liebenberg, who's General Manager for L'Oreal Lux, South Africa and Taryn Louch, a multifaceted, multi-talented actor and performance, or actress, should I say that? No, no, no gender. <laughs>